So this is another Visconti, but this is a special Visconti. Now, this you'll see here is a Visconti Rembrandt, uh, but it has a number here, and this is number 08. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So let me unbox this pen. So you see here the modern style Visconti box. So it comes in this cardboard box. I do like these boxes a lot. They are fairly minimal in terms if you are collecting pens. You don't have a huge box or a heavy box to store. So if I lift the lid on this pen box, you'll see a little pen pillow, which is actually quite nice to be able to put your pen on. And then you see the pen, and if I just remove this here, you'll also see a Colt Pens. And this is a special edition in honor of our 16th birthday. Visconti have specially crafted 80 luxury exclusive fountain pens. We're so happy to reach this milestone, and we thank you for supporting our passion for pens. So this is number 8 of 80. Uh, you also get a Visconti lovely brochure as well and it details the history on Visconti, uh, Florence in Italy and it shows some of the pens like the Florentine craftsmanship here on the Il Magnifico, the Leonardo da Vinci Machina, I have both of those in my collection, the Bronze Age uh, Lava Homo Sapiens, the Blue Lagoon as well uh, and then some Visconti Van Goghs, the Ecologic and some of the more expensive limited editions like the Voyager 30 as well. And detailing the types of mechanisms that Visconti use, like the hook safe lock mechanism. You can also get my pen finials for a lot of the Visconti pens. They're magnetic and you can just attach either your initials or gemstones to the pens. And it's called the my pen system. So you get that booklet you get obviously the limited edition card there and then you get the pen. So let's remove the pen and we'll do a review of this pen. So this is the Visconti and this is the Colt Pens limited edition and this is number 8 of 80. Now this is a Rembrandt. You'll see here it has the Visconti V logo. This is a newer modern Visconti logo that Visconti have been using for about the last year, maybe two years now. Now, the other finial here on the end of the pen is just a dome. Now, you can see here you get the standard Visconti bridge clip and the Visconti bridge clip is laser etched, and I do like this a lot. I have a lot of Viscontis that have the enamel, and although the enamel adds a little bit of color, sometimes the enamel can flake off, and I've had that on a few pens. Uh, it's not a major issue, and Visconti can uh, rectify that, but I like these laser etched wordings of the, the Visconti name there, because that actually just makes it stand out, in my opinion. Now, the cap band here, you'll see here, it says made in Italy, and it says Visconti. Now, the Visconti Rembrandt was originally one of the uh, lower price pens uh, range from Visconti. That has now been replaced by a few other um, models as well. Um, the Rembrandt, I do like. It has a magnetic closure, so you just literally pull it to come off, and it's quite a strong magnetic closure. Now, it does have a metal section here, and this is in a gold trim uh, plating. Now, some people do say that they don't like uh, metal sections because they find them quite slippery. And in all my years of collecting, I have never found a Visconti Rembrandt in my collection or a Van Gogh that also has a similar silver section to be slippery. Even in the, the warmest of months in summer, I have never had a problem with those. Now, the nib here is a number five size nib. So it's a small nib. It's not the regular number six size that you might find on, say, a Visconti Homo Sapiens. 
uh, but it has the new sort of logo etching there on the nib and it's a medium nib. Now, Visconti did switch to the dots to designate uh, whether or not one dot, I believe, was a fine, two dots was a medium, and three dots was a broad. And that confused a lot of people. So they have also been including the nib width on there as well. So that's an M for medium. Now, it comes with an ABS plastic feed there as well. Um, I did... Uh, Colt Pens asked me what nib I would like to try, and I said a medium or broad, and they sent me a medium. Now, in terms of the filling mechanism, it's a cartridge and cartridge converter. Uh, this does come with the cartridge converter uh, in the pen, in the box. So I was very glad to see that. I think I've not bought a Rembrandt for a while, but I think uh, in some markets, in some regions, you don't get the converter in a standard Rembrandt. And you that is an optional extra, but you do get some cartridges. But this one does come with a cartridge converter, so I'm really glad to, to see that. Uh, now, in terms of price point, uh, this is a little bit more than a standard Rembrandt. A standard Rembrandt is typically around about 140 UK pounds. Uh, this comes in a little bit more at 200 pounds. However, it is a limited edition and it's got this really, really beautiful sort of material. Now, this, this material, this color is quite dark. Um, now, initially, when I, I looked at this pen, I thought it was a black. Uh, I'm hoping my studio lights do pick up on this a bit. It's a very, very dark blue. Uh, so uh, it is a lovely material. And uh, I think Colt Pens uh, really picked a stunner here, especially with the gold trim on this pen as well. So uh, this pen is quite nice. And uh, we'll see what the writing sample looks like in a moment but i think with that let's go and do a size check we'll do a weight check we'll do a pen comparison and then we'll do a writing sample so the full length of this pen we are looking at about 138 millimeters in length the length of the cap we are looking at about 64 millimeters in length now, the length of the body to the tip of the nib or tip of the tines, we are looking at about 122 millimeters in length. So that is actually quite a uh, nice length of pen. Now, you can see it here in the size of my hand. Can I post the cap? I can. Uh, it's not magnetically posting uh, like it does when you put the, the cap on the section but it does actually sit quite nicely there. So if you are a cap poster, this pen will actually post quite nicely. Uh, if you are not, then honestly, this still is actually a nice size in my hand. So for me, uh, I probably wouldn't post this cap, but then again, typically I don't post a lot of my caps. I only post caps when I feel a pen is too light or too short. Now, I think let's do a weight check. So, the full weight of the pen, we are looking at around 33 grams in weight. The weight of the cap, we are looking at just over 13 grams in weight. And then the weight of the pen, we are looking at yeah, just under 16 and a half grams in weight. And that's uninked. So, once it's inked, you're going to be looking a little bit more closer to 16 and a half grams. So I think with that, let's do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Ashford. We have a Visconti Race Tech. We have a, a Visconti, and this is the uh, Queen's Anniversary Visconti. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens. We have the Visconti Colt Pens Rembrandt exclusive. We have a Pelican M600 Turquoise White. We have a Pelican M800 Vibrant Blue. We have a Twisby Mini AL. We have a Twisby Diamond 580 AL. And we have a Twisby Vac 
700R in the iris. Now, I wanted to just talk about the material on this pen. So not only is it a dark blue uh, material, but it is an acrylic resin. Um, it is a very nice resin. Um, it's not sort of a swirly pattern like you would have on the Van Goghs. Um, one other thing that I would like to say as well is that if you look very closely here on the cap, you will see it actually has the limited edition number there. And it's so it is engraved on the cap, so it's number eight of 80. I always like it when pen manufacturers do an engraving on either the body or the cap, but they make it subtle so it's not in your face, like uh, all over the section or on the body where it's going to be noticed. So, so this you really do have to look for this, but you will see that there, number eight of 80, along with that made in Italy that I showed you and the Visconti brand name there. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So let's do the writing sample. So this is the uh, Visconti Rembrandt. And it is the Colt Pens exclusive. So you can only buy this one at Colt Pens. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a medium nib and it is a steel nib. Now, the ink in here today, I decided I would uh, ink it up with a Visconti ink. So this is Visconti blue. Now, in terms of line variation, let's take a look at this here. So it is a steel nib and you're getting, I definitely would say, a Western medium line. Now, if I try to apply a bit more pressure, you can probably coax it to a broad line. And if I do the figure of eight, you can see here, it does have quite a little bit of flex to that nib, but do remember it is a steel nib. So like you will get some line variation out of it. Now you can see there that this pen is writing flawlessly out of the box. I've not done anything with the nib. Uh, Colt pens have not done anything with the nib either. So this is an out of box experience from Visconti. Uh, you can see there's no hard starts or skips. So, so this is a very good writing nib. Now, in terms of wetness, let's take a look at this. We'll do uh, a wetness test. So this is actually quite a nice writing pen. It's not too wet but it's wet enough so you could actually use this nicely in a journal uh, you wouldn't have to wait too long in a notebook or a journal before turning the page uh, for me uh, i would say it's quite a wet nib uh, it's not a fire hose nib fire hose i normally say is at least half the page to three quarters of the page this is an a4 page so in terms of width this would be the full length of, or full height of an A5 page, that length. What do I like? What do I not like about the pen? Well, it's a Rembrandt. And honestly, I do like the Visconti Rembrandts. I've owned quite a few in my uh, past collecting days. Uh, likewise, I've owned some Visconti Van Goghs as well. Um, for me, I, I typically do like them. Uh, they are what I would consider an affordable pen. Uh, they're not the cheapest of pens, you can get pens from £20 upwards to £100. I would say these are probably the next line of pens. So typically the Rembrandts sell for around about £140-ish, £144. Uh, this uh, is a little bit more expensive. Being a limited edition, it's £200. There is only 80 of these pens. If you do like a dark blue version, then definitely go over to Colt Pens, take a look at uh, the, the pen. Uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, but I like these pens. I, I really do like these pens a lot. So uh, I there really isn't anything that I dislike about this pen. Uh, you can see from the writing uh, sample here, the pen writes flawlessly out of the box. And I know a number of people, certainly on forums, will, will chastise Visconti for pens that don't write. Uh, I rarely have had a pen that doesn't write from Visconti. 
yes, you might get some difference in in how a nib writes between Visconti's, but you get that with Pelicans, you get that with any other brand. So uh, there will always be nuances and differences uh, on any manufacturer of pen. 